our quarantine movies made on lockdown second place winner is Nam Nama and Lola Grandmother's Home. All three of you will get to represent our country and serve as our official entries to the International Film Festival Manhattan. Uh, Sean, ay ang kami ng picnic at Burnham. Asiin mo kami abon ng langoy at bye-bye. Sin magapay lang di pandemya. Sin tapin di agaw. Ila ang kadina. Ila ang kadina. Dana ay din. Cut! Cut! Hi everyone, I'm Joni Linda Salia from Baguio City, Philippines. And today we're going to have a very special interview with an important guest all the way from New York City, the co-founder of the International Film Festival Manhattan, Sir Luis Pejon. Kamusta? <laughs> Greetings from New York City. Sir Luis Pejon is a professional filmmaker and actor from New York. But before we get into that, here's a quick fact. He is actually a Cordilleran from Abra. May samot lang so nga kailian tayo. Bueno, but bale, my mom uh, married, of course, Luis Pedron, who's from Sariaya Quezon. But my mom is from Peña Rubia, Abra. Tingyan ni mother ko. Mm -hmm. Tapos, kami naman, we were raised in Cainta. Uh, but since daddy was a mining engineer, we were raised in different um, provinces kasi mining engineer siya. My mom would actually, my parents would actually let me stay with relatives in Abra uh, several times, especially pag mi balik bayan don. That's why I kinda know Tingyan, I kinda know Itneg uh, speaking it. And mommy actually speaks uh, Itneg with us. I think it's a Cordilleran uh, weaving that you've got there. Yes, um, my close friend Jeanette Marco actually brought this for me. This is from Baguio. Um, it's supposed to be a native weave from Baguio. Um, usually, you know, in Abra, they would say in Abel. The good thing na dala dala nyo sir there. They're in New York. <laughs> You're putting yes, a cultural yes, yes. mark. <laughs> so, um, but otherwise, yeah, I got into UP. I, uh, I was in UP Manila for medicine, non, pero I transferred to UP Diliman for UP film. And it was quite experimental during that time. We had celebrities as lecturers and, and we had uh, Mam Charo Santos, mm -hmm. we had Ricky Lee, yeah. uh, we, had, we had Rula Andatini, if I'm not mistaken. Um, all of those big names, but apparently we have big names in our batch. Um, Kuya Kim was our batchmate, Ogi Alcasi, um, and then a lot of ABS-CBN um, uh, executives. Uh, and of course, we have uh, Julius Babao, Titin Babao. Who were also film majors. So aside from film, making films and acting to several international films, you're also paving your way in New York as a film critic, producer, and a festival director. Can you share to us your journey in reaching these achievements? The reason why I started was years and years ago, I still wanted to be an actor. In the Philippines, I did dubbing, I did um, voiceovers when I was in college. But otherwise, when I went here, um, it was just doing jobs here and there. But during 97, 98, it so happened that um, it so happened that I, I did this three days in a shoot called um, Men in Black. So in Men in Black, uh, they needed 100 Asians for this particular scene when he jumps on, on top of a double decker. So lo and behold, I was um, qualified to become a union member of Screen Actor Guild. A union member. So when I did that, it took me like a year or so before joining in. And then I was trying to do, you know, cameo roles, uh, roles here and there. 
And then I was telling my dad, I have this few dollars that I earned from these movies. What will I do? So I went back to school. So I did two years at the school for film and television. I did the two year in Meisner in acting for film and TV. So I got immersed in that. I got some jobs here and there. And then 2000, I was getting hired in some movies. And then lo and behold, 9-11 happened. So everything went down. Hollywood left New York because um, Hollywood shoots here in New York, as you know. And they went to Canada. They went um, across the border and um, no shoots in New York. So I had to reinvent myself. I did a website called fanclubx.com because I did web, web um, page design uh, class. Sherwin Murad and Jutan, my friends, we went around different film festivals to do film reviews. We went to Tribeca Film Festival in New York. We went to Slam Dance in Park City, Utah, including Sundance Film Festival over there, um, Robert Redford's um, Film Festival. So I do interviews and I did um, film critic, you know, um, reviewing of films. And then um, my family friend, my uncle, um, Tito Junior Nilia, in um, the Film Society of Lincoln Center, um, that's the company that owns the, the New York Film Festival. It's the most prestigious film festival in the world. It's invitational, actually. For feature films, they invite films. So he always invites me to come there. And then whenever I watch, he would say, like, why don't you write more film reviews? So that's how I got more immersed in, in all those films and, and, and have red carpet um, experience doing that. And then when I went around doing this, I figured, Hey, then there's a way that I can showcase other filmmakers. Maybe I can network with other filmmakers as well to collaborate. Um, and meanwhile, I can make an intimate film festival. Um, I co-founded Soho International Film Festival. For two years, I was with them. And then eventually, I created International Film Festival in Manhattan with my filmmaker friend, Jerry Balasta, who so happened that um, COVID got him. He passed away uh, on the height of COVID here in New York City last March. Um, it's very unfortunate, but one of his legacies is, of course, here, International Film Festival Manhattan. And we're in our milestone 10th year. Yes, congratulations. So, <laughs> 10th year is something. And, yeah. um, and I met you because of this film festival. I was able to get into this uh, film festival because of a local festival here in the Philippines. It's called Quarantine, and the top three winners will have a chance to participate in the International Film Festival Manhattan. With the background with Quarantine, Sir Jovi, the owners of Tagline International, um, had a sponsor for a cell phone film festival. Um, but um, something happened, but eventually they still, the company still had to put it up there. Thus, yeah. Quarantine. So I was one of their advisors and I'm part of the selection committee and also um, one of the four judges. And you got discovered because of that. <laughs> <laughs> Overwhelming, <Surreal. laughs> actually. Yeah, yeah. Because I just I did know. that for one week. I'm not used to shoot films using phones. So it's quite a bit challenging because I'm um, used to using DSLR and all that. You can manipulate all the things using, using camera. But then <laughs> it's mobile filmmaking. I think it's the new, the new era of filmmaking. It's with mobile phones, digital age. So it's very accessible and it also encourages young filmmakers to shoot their own without, uh, with, with less budget. Now let's go back to your experiences in film festivals, sir, because not all can participate in such prestige film festivals abroad. Can, can you share to us the experience and also, uh, you also in interviewed some celebrities in the red carpet. Are you like starstruck? Believe it or not, I'm, I'm as nervous talking to you as nervous talking to them. <laughs> but otherwise, what I discovered was just throw out the question. Otherwise, it, they're going to make sense out of it because they, you know, people will answer you with a soundbite and especially celebrities, they know how to answer soundbite. And then even when my question didn't make sense, they'll make a sense of it. <laughs> So I did, um, was able to attend some pre-parties for the Oscars. I have some interviews with Jeffrey Rush. Um, I, 
one of the um, events actually I actually interviewed Taika Waititi years ago but now he's like um, he won the Oscars uh, for best screenplay last year um, going to film festivals it's hard to go to bigger film festivals because even as press you need to they need to see your work not everybody gets um, accepted I uh, got rejected a couple times in some film festivals of course you mope and cry but otherwise you try again the next time one of the reasons why I'm starting the YouTube channel again is I want to go around film festivals again when time comes uh, when we can travel again to actually interview people again on the red carpet yeah it is, it is hard to get there and similarly it's also hard to get accepted in a film festival as a Filipino, how is like working in the Big Apple and with the diverse races and culture? So um, I'm blessed enough since I lived in the Big Apple, uh, I have been part of a lot of New York stories of Filipino Americans, including American Adobo, which is about um, 40s um, Filipino Americans who live here. It starred Christopher De Leon, Ricky Devao, Sandy Andalong, and um, Cherry Pie Pekachi, directed by Loris Gilliam. It was shot on film, believe it or not. That was in the early 2000s and came out 2002, if I'm not mistaken. And then the other one I was involved in, it was shot for a month. Um, here it was um, I Love New York, GMA TV's uh, I Love New York, um, which starred Jolina Magdangal. So yeah. I was one of the producers on set as well. And then I also was part of um, the pre-production for In My Life, the Vilma Santos film. Um, that was shot here in New York City, but I uh, was just part of the pre-production. And then, of course, the last one was um, um, originally titled New York. Uh, the original title was uh, Manila, Hong Kong, New York. But now it's going to be entitled Tagpuan, um, the film of Congressman Alfred Vargas. Uh, we have Chaina Magdangal and Isa Caltado and Congressman Alfred Vargas. And of course, written by Ricky Lee and uh, directed by Mac Alejandro. So I was part of that last year and it should be coming out hopefully in Metro Manila Film Festival either the summer or the December. Happy to be part of those Filipino films that were shot here in New York, so I'm part of history. I mean, thank God, yeah. I'm really blessed to have worked with, um, especially with Ricky Lee, because hmm. um, I was one of the um, people he interviewed for that particular movie um, for ideas for the immigrant story here yeah. in New York City. But Ricky Lee was, um, believe it or not, was an awardee at the International Film Festival in Manhattan years ago as our Lifetime Achievement Awardee. And let's go back to your International Film Festival, which will happen this November 19 to 22, and it is dubbed as Digital Hope. So, sir, I'm just going to ask, why is the festival dubbed as Digital Hope? And how were you able to push through despite the pandemic? Right. Um, you're not going to believe it, like during the height of the pandemic, our area here in Queens was the epicenter of the epicenter of the world. We had the highest death rates. People were dying left and right. They would have to put them in a refrigerator. If you cannot get your relative on time and get a funeral, they would um, actually put you in, in an island somewhere in New York and put you in a box and put you in the soil without proper funeral. So, um, and then my business partner, Jerry Balasa, died in March. So I was depressed. I was going like, oh, we're, IFFM has to be postponed, this and that. And how in the world can we do a live event since there's no live event? But I got encouraged because um, a lot of film festivals did it virtually. So I experimented in creating this. Hopefully people will come and watch, even if it's virtual. And now it's not only New Yorkers who can watch, but anyone around the world, especially in, um, well, also in the Philippines and Asia, but especially here in North America and Europe, since our Wi-Fi is a, little, a tad bit better here. So I do encourage everyone to, you know, buy the ticket at iffmnyc.com. They get the thing there. So that's a reason why I put Digital Hope, because I myself, I was hopeless. I said, like, it's not going to happen. Um, People are dying around me, and um, it was really terrible during that time. And then now we are doing well, better. This area has the least um, 
um, sickness and hospitalization. I mean, cross our fingers. <sighs> but otherwise, um, yeah, we are hopeful. Hopefully, people will get entertained because um, we have to entertain ourselves. People watch Netflix and just vegging out and just watching Netflix. But watching International Film Festival Manhattan film are meaningful. You're supporting Tibetan filmmakers and no one supports Tibetan filmmakers. No event here in North America actually creates um, Tibetan filmmaker showcases. We have a lot of Filipino showcased here in the Swim Festival. Filipinos here and abroad. We have some Europeans. We have two Indian movies that are not Bollywood. They're Malayalam from the South and Tamil. Those have are created in those particular regions. Um, and we do support a lot of filmmakers. We have Estonia, we have Bulgaria, and they're meaningful. So hopefully it encourages you and entertains you. Um, Joni Lynn, it's actually the holidays here in America. Thanksgiving is happening a few days after this one, a few days after the film festival. Um, that's the last, second to last Thursday of the month. And that's the biggest holiday here in America. It's almost like Christmas. And then Christmas is happening, New Year's happening. Everyone is sad because they cannot visit their elderly or their relatives or friends. Some of them cannot visit each other. They cannot travel. So the holidays will be sad. So hopefully the International Film Festival Man will give them a little bit of happiness, showing them some educational documentaries and entertain them with comedies. And, and lockdown films, I, I know they'll be entertaining. But otherwise, if it gives a glimmer of hope and if you make one person happy for this film festival, I think we've done our part. And it's, it's so great, sir, that you've pushed through this event because a lot of people uh, need to watch this kind of films. Uh, it has different genres, different, it tackles a lot of things, it has about depression, about lockdown films and all that. Like if they can watch in Netflix and buy a subscription, they can also watch a film festival that is very accessible actually to everyone. And it also reminds them of home because there are a lot of foreign films that are or, or Filipino films. You know, we have a lot of OFWs and they, want, they would want to watch these films that would remind them of home, of their food, the culture, the pinikpikan. <laughs> like that so I'm gonna... it's, like, when, it's like unifying each one of us and i really do encourage also each one of you to watch this year because it's very different it, i think it's also very meaningful because it's also a tribute to sir jerry balasta your co-founder and and it also means that despite the odds we can still push through this event even though it's virtual but at least we uh, we overcome, right, sir? <laughs> and you did your best, sir, with all your energy, with all the things you're doing, the marketing, and a lot of, you know, connecting to other people. Right, sir? <laughs> We're gonna thank you, Pai. Um, what I was gonna say, too, is um, every now and then, we have some discoveries. Years and years ago, our first best actress was Lisa Dino. And yeah. you know who Lisa Dino is now. Yeah. And this year, we have Johnny Lynn da Sala. <laughs> you never know who Johnny Lynn will be in the future. Claim it. <laughs> so if we made one person happy, if we made one person um, go further in her career, we've done our part. So hopefully, yeah. one of them will be Johnny Lynn. And um, they call me visionary. Some of my Christian friends call me visionary. Um, I see visions of someone, I see visions of us, everyone else in the film festival. Um, I push them, I encourage them, and um, ho hopefully in your career, in your career path, um, IFFM will be part of it, and New York will be part of it, of it, hopefully. This International Film Festival Manhattan is also meaningful to me because it's my first International Film Fest. Yes, papatunayan po natin yung ano nyo, yung visionary nyo because Bisha. I claim, let's claim it. <laughs> and important din na I claim, I claim, claim. Opo, important din na may nagsasabi talaga, nag word of words of declaration for it to be fulfilled. Yes. Bring it up.
So, Sika pa yan, yeah. i-declare yung, i-declare yung uh, regular ni Pai. Yeah. You mean sir? So, ayun. Sige. <laughs> so, medyo na ano yun, medyo touching. <laughs> Let's go to the next question. <laughs> You said in your Q and A session last last time was that you are also open for collaboration with other filmmakers that have participated in your film festival. Can you share to us more about it? Believe it or not, a lot of collaborations have come up um, after the film festival. One of our winners uh, was NPP Kadiso, who had a film here that won a stray. And years and years ago, when you win at the International Film Festival Manhattan, the NCCA Ani Nang Dangal Presidential Award will be given to you. But um, that was years ago. But NPP Kadiso, during the award ceremony, because the best actor of that year at the International Film Festival Manhattan was Jake Kuenka. So they met at the awards night. And lo and behold, after that, they had the Cinema Cinemalaya film. And then also, there have been short films that because they met at the International Film Festival and then they collaborated and then they submitted it to the film festival. I have also acted in some short films because meeting the filmmakers at the International Film Festival and We have a special exhibition of a short film at the International Film Festival and then called Dating Blind and I'm playing a waiter in that film. And I'm showcasing that at our awards night. I'm also showing a short film of um, that I co-produced and Jerry Balasta produced and uh, made. It's called Solar Champion. So I'm putting that side by side, two short films right before the awards night ceremony. So hopefully you guys can watch that. So it's a tad, it's, it's, I'm trying to make the event meaningful. <laughs> And then I'm also trying to showcase my um, things that I can do, and so I am open up for open for collaborations. And I also encourage everyone to collaborate after being part of the International Film Festival. Event. And I hope then uh, to more collaborations and to more connections to them as well, because ibarin kapag nagkaroon kayo ng nagshare, you have a shared experience, and you also want to work with each other and to learn from each other as well. Hindi lang sa sa mga ka filmmakers but also to you sir, sir um, as a festival director and to those who are working in this festival so that's great sir that you are not just just not just leaving them hanging but there's a lot of things going on yeah collaborating and still connecting with each other and I'm here for the long run yeah if you let me be part of um, your career path and vice versa if you, if you want to submit an international film festival Manhattan every year. Wow. Do <laughs> you have any upcoming projects or plans in the future that you could invite the people? Well, I'm looking forward to Tagpuan. Um, I was the production manager here in New York. The Metro Manila Film Festival in Manila in December, hopefully if it gets selected or else it'll be a summer Metro Manila Film Festival. I will be submitting a film of mine called um, Waiting Room. My experience with um, waiting for dad when, um, before he died in the ICU because I met a lot of different people in the ICU and uh, you would see how I digressed health-wise and, and mentally um, while I was um, taking care of dad in the hospital. And of course, um, it's being distributed, I mean, it's being submitted right now a short film that I am in called Dating Blind. It's actually doing other film festivals besides ours. Uh, it's going to be in Las Vegas soon and it did a couple of New Jersey film festivals. But Dating Blind is directed by Brian Pollock. Otherwise, I'm looking forward to hopefully going to Cannes Film Festival for the Marchado film for the um, film market this uh, May 2021, if God permitting that uh, I bring some short films over there from the IFFM, from the International Film Festival Manan, to showcase um, uh, an industry screening over there. International Film Festival Manan goes to Cannes Film Festival. And maybe I'll invite Jonelyn de Salas' short film. Let's see. Um, but I will definitely <laughs> am planning for that for 2021. And if not this year, if not next year, in 2022. But hey, I'm, I'm here. I can judge for your events 
your film contests and whatnot. I can collaborate, and of course, I can act in your film. Yeah. So <laughs> hopefully, Jonelyn also in the future will come to New York and join us at the International Film Festival Manhattan Live in the future. And yeah. if you make it here in New York, you can make it anywhere. Amen to that. <laughs> And we're also blessed and inspired by your story, sir. And thank you so much for sharing um, all the all your journey, all your milestones. And it's not just your win, but it is also our win, also as a Filipino, and also in the arts community, sir. By the way, don't forget, of course, don't forget to have a faith. To God be the glory. You always have to give it to God. But even in New York, if you don't have a faith, if you don't have a God, if you don't have a belief, I don't think you'll survive it here in New York. But otherwise, I'm sure it's the same thing in Manila or in the Philippines. Be sure you have your God, you have a relationship with your Lord. Um, otherwise, you cannot just do it by yourself. You have to be guided from above. I always pray for guidance. Who am I going to select this year? Who, who am I going to showcase? And how do I do it? Otherwise, I don't think I can do it by myself. Of course, a lot of my friends and supporters and sponsors are helping me out. But otherwise, you know, always um, depend on God or, or else you won't be able to reach anything without Him. Yeah, so that's very true because, you know, apart from Him, we can do nothing. Nothing. I can do all things through Christ, through Christ strengthens who strengthens me. me. Yes. yes sir. So that's the bottom line or else, you know. Mm. Otherwise, you know, I couldn't say all of the names, so you're going to just see it on my website, iffmnyc.com. Um, and then you'll see all the sponsors, everyone who helped me out, all the filmmakers there, and all the schedule and the tickets, iffmnyc.com, November 19 to 22, 2020, International Film Festival in Manhattan. Please watch the film of Johnny Linda Sala. It's going to be part of Short Films Lockdown. Yeah, it's a very new category, I, I guess, because, you know, we're just experiencing yeah. this lockdown. So, wow, there's something yeah. new. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting lockdown story. And also, sir, can you share to us your social media accounts that they can follow, subscribe, they, they can connect you with, and most especially that you're starting with your own YouTube channel. Right, the YouTube channel, you can find it on Luis Pedron, L-U-I-S-P-E-D-R-O-N, but it's under Pinoy 718, Pinoy 718. So you'll see, you know, a lot of me and, of course, the International Film Festival and, and the area I live in. And, of course, find me, Luis Pedron, you'd see a lot of my announcements. And, of course, IFFM New York for the Facebook. IFFM NYC for Instagram. On Twitter, it's also Luis Pedron IFFM. But otherwise, Jonalyn, I'm actually looking forward to this feature because I know you will be blessed back for doing this feature. It documents your experience at the Film Festival in Manhattan and also documents IFFM where we are right now on our 10th year. Yes. Thank you very much. More years to come, sir. And thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and more, more fruitfulness and abundance to your film festival. I know people, you've helped a lot of people. You've made this as their platform and there will be more blessings to go back to you as well, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Pai. Nagyaman ako, Pai. Nagyaman ako, sir. Just take me na. Nagyaman kami, sir. Nagyaman kami, sir.